you're your greatest asset, not a stock, bond, or piece of real estate. And if we look at investing as quality of life is one of those pillars, and you're investing in your quality of life so that you live wealthy along the way, you just have a different energy that you show up. And that energy allows you to be more productive. And again, write a different story. Be more enjoyable to be around. You've delegated that role. They own that role like it's their business. If they can't solve it, they come to you and say, how would you do this? But you're empowering them. And anytime something does come to you, you're asking as many questions to get them to figure it out on their own so that they walk away as trained as possible. If someone's 29 years old, they maybe don't have the same maturity in some aspects of business. So the more that you could be a mentor and a boss, and the less that you have to be a problem solver and a technician, the better your life's gonna get as you kind of evolve through this. It's just the nature of business. Is this, a business is a series of imperfections on the path to progress. And as we look for what what we want, we've got to look at the path to get there is never straight and narrow. It's really something that we zigzag our way there. And as you go through that process, again, how do you offload each time? How do you improve each time? What is to be systematized? What isn't to be systematized? What do you have the right team members that you can rely on, which allows that to stop occupying space in your mind? And then you start to look at what you can do with your time over time. What is it that you can do to create your best life with the circumstances that are giving and choose into that and take responsibility for it. Not everything that happened was something you chose or wanted, but what you do to choose moving forward, you've chosen to really take the reins on that. You chose to be a victor instead of victim and simply embrace certain things even if it's not ideal. And that's how business is always gonna be, never ideal. The only ideal a business has is the romantic story someone tells afterwards. But in the process along the way, we actually have this real experience called life, and we look back with perspective and say, oh, that might have been a mistake, but we just did the best we could with where we were energetically and informationally, and ultimately with our bandwidths. And part of it's gonna be, the burnout you face from previous, you have to kind of let go of that past and heal from it so that burnout doesn't carry over moving forward. Because that burnout exists in a story inside of your mind. It's a story that you tell. That story has a heaviness to it, and it kind of holds you back. Now, how do we capture and cultivate the lessons so moving forward you don't repeat certain experiences? Because I know that I've made more than one mistake more than one time. And when I make those mistakes over and over, they just get more and more painful. But it's usually because of emotion or because because of wishful thinking or because of hope or whatever it is that I don't quite create that responsibility and accountability and just expect things to be different when I've set up a situation for that not to occur. And it just gets more painful over time. So how do you cultivate those lessons without carrying the baggage? And I think that's an important consideration. How do you cultivate lessons without carrying the baggage so you don't repeat the same mistakes? And I think that you probably have intuition along the way that tells you it's just it's not always convenient or it's not always something that you want to pay attention to because you want the story to be a little bit different than what your intuition tells you. But the longer we don't deal with that, the more problematic the things become. And we eventually have to clean up messes because it goes for too long. I only say these things from personal experience and my own situation of going through it myself and even going through it as we speak because it's so much easier with outside perspective to see what's happening and to give advice than when we're in the thick of the emotion and when we're in the dynamic of the relationship. And relationships are always gonna have these dynamics that create some type of conflict or some type of challenge or or some type of celebration. I mean, it's not just always the negative things, it's also the positive things that come with that. But we're dealing with people's emotions and we're dealing with people's, you know, uh, other things that are happening in their life that are carrying over. Create your rules, create your structure. Like here's your rules of what you do and what you don't do. Here's your rules of how people operate with you and what's not accepted. I mean, when I look at my own life, like sometimes I just don't have accountability. I don't create standards and I let people get away with things. But if I would have created those standards and say, hey, these are my expectations, it would have changed. And I also just find it fascinating that so much of how we live our life is the words that we speak and the stories that we tell. And it's easy when we get scarred and wounded to keep retelling the stories of those things. Like I went through ending a business relationship that I of a business I founded. I sold it, but then ended the relationship. And that's like, I talked about it more than I wanted to. And part of that's just the healing process. So A, give ourselves some grace and leeway. So that's, those emotions are natural part of humanity. And if we don't process it, that's when they plague us. If we don't process it all the way. It keeps kind of carrying around and whispering in our ear and, and you know, it's, it's these dark corners of the past and what could happen in the future. But you're an investor in your employees. 
you're investing time and attention to train them so that this business is the story that you want to tell and they operate within the very best of who they are because you've uplifted them. Yeah, this whole concept is investing in your quality of life. So if we break investments down, there's assets that, that we own from that. There's maybe, and those might be like a piece of real estate that we don't really relate to or utilize ourselves. But then there's other assets that we relate to, which might be like intellectual property or real estate that we actually utilized or a business that we're part of. But then there's also investing in our quality of life and looking at ourselves as an asset. And when we invest in relaxation, rejuvenation, or recreation, we show up in a different way. I basically worked nonstop for four months, which exhausted me. I could barely get anything done by the end of that four months because I had no downtime. I was always doing everything I could. And then all of a sudden I worked out a little bit. I played with my son. I had some downtime. And then I actually started to get more creative. I started writing Killing Sacred Cows. I had this burst of energy because I took care of myself. And before I just always had this notion, if I'm taking time off, it's time I'm not making money. And I really saw it very linear, like more time spent in work, more money made. And then in 2017, I go to Italy for a summer and I make more money that year than any other year before because the team matures, it grows up. You, you look at like just the fact that I had enough downtime. I came home relaxed and I came home with a lot of like time that was downtime to think about what do I really want? What's next for me? And how's this all look like, you know, but, and then it's just the enjoyment of going out to a dinner and hanging out with my family and jumping in the pool and going seeing new sites and learning about coffee because I didn't really drink it before I went. Like you just get this different experience and it gives new perspectives. I think they're really healthy because you're your greatest asset, not a stock bond or piece of real estate. And if we look at investing as quality of life is one of those pillars and you're investing in your quality of life so that you live wealthy along the way, you just have a different energy that you show up and that energy allows you to be more productive. And again, write a different story, be more enjoyable to be around. Like it just has these, these kind of indirect benefits that are so rich. And I feel like the world kind of misses that when they talk spreadsheets, it can really have us stop thinking about that enjoyment and we get in that survival. And it's part of kind of this ebb and flow of life. And I just think you're going to build a lot of wealth. Like let's talk about your obstacles, right? There was a, that was a safe space to talk about that. We're talking about this whole different world, this whole different lifestyle that you've opted into. And it's really exciting to see. And I hopefully you'll just keep healing from the past and processing those emotions rather than holding on to them and finding outlets that you get to go and enjoy and be creative or just have fun. And, and I want you to create that best life because I just feel like I'm living second rate life or whatever it is. I'm like, what if we look at like, you don't get a second chance to live the a first class lifestyle. So what does the first class lifestyle look like with who you are today and where you're headed? Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.